Hey team, Barry Watson here, great to see you again. Now many of you know that I love the freedom and the flexibility that staying in a tent while backpacking gives you. However, from time to time, similar to yourselves, I do like staying in a hut or a refuge if I'm overseas. So today, what I'd like to give you is some common sense tips for some not always common practices that people employ when they're in huts that'll really help you enjoy your experience and give you a lot more fun. So if you're ready to get into it, let's go. Okay, so the first one could be classed as quite controversial and that is bunk bagging. And that is where part of your party who are faster will rush ahead and they will claim a bunk by putting gear on bunks which they're not actually going to occupy. And so when people come after you, but before the rest of your group, they realize, oh, there's people already here, but actually they aren't there, they are still coming. Now, according to the DOC website, it is first come, first served. And so although you may think that you can rush ahead and claim a bunk for other people behind you, I would suggest that is not in the spirit of hiking and tramping. And so from my perspective, I think that's a big no-no. Now, I'll be interested to see your comments, so please put them below if you think I'm right or if you think I'm way off. Number two is, yes, in the course of a day, you may have summited three mountains, you may have walked 20 miles, and you may have done that all with an ultra, super ultra lightweight backpack on your back. But the reality is that people aren't as interested in you bragging about your exploits as they are about telling you about what they've done. So what I suggest is, in conversation, be ultra interested in what people are interested in, and you'll find that they'll be more interested in what you're into. Shh, okay. Several months ago, a couple of us arrived into a rather full hut at 11.30 at night. And although we were quiet, later on I was actually told off for doing so because we woke a few people up. So the moral of the story is, if you arrive in late to a hut that's got lots of people in it, stay on the porch or stay in a tent if you've got one. If you are the world's loudest snorer, can I please suggest that you either sleep on your side, perhaps more particularly sleep in a tent, or hand out a whole range of earplugs and so everyone can get a great night's sleep. I hope that you're enjoying these tips and if you do, you may consider subscribing to the channel and that way you won't miss out on other great videos I bring out. Remember to take off your boots and leave them at the door. It not only stops dirt getting in, but it can be really noisy on wooden floors when you're walking with your boots on it. Instead wear something a bit more casual, like Crocs, or in winter, something like a down booties are really good. If you're in areas where they're cares though, tie the laces together as the weight of two boots is far too much for them to be able to fly away with. I would always suggest that when you go to an unbookable hut that you always take a air mattress with you. Why? Because the last thing you want to do is you get there and people feel as though they've got to cram in together because you got there late or you didn't prepare. And in terms of just generally working with people, make sure that you don't hog all the bench space with your food and your cooking gear. Make sure obviously in terms of getting the gas out and fresher in, that you open up the window, especially if you're cooking something that's quite spicy. And in terms of storage, make sure also that you allow other people to be able to utilize the storage space, whether that be actual cubicles that they can put the gear in or hooks that you can hang your wet gear on. And in terms of being courteous to other people, make sure at night time that when people are trying to get to sleep, you just turn down the volume of your voices and that voices can travel amongst those huts pretty quickly. They're not really that acoustically aligned. And also, if you know you've got to get up early in the morning, make sure that you prepare as much as you gear as possible the night beforehand so there's less talking, there's less rummaging around. And if you do have to get up early in the morning, make sure please that you turn your alarm down low. Don't have it on high. One time I was in a hut and I was sleeping next to a guy and he must have been waiting for the sun to rise and get a good photo because his alarm went off four, that's right, four times before he got up. I literally could have said something nasty to him. And when you get up, please ensure that your headlight isn't on search and rescue high beam, turn it down to low beam, or more particularly, put it on the red light, which is what it's for. It'll just mean that people won't wake up and feel they're being interrogated. Before you leave the hut, always remember to replace any firewood that you may have used throughout the night. Always sweep the floor, so keep it clean and tidy for the people coming afterwards. 
Ear the mattresses by putting them on their side and also take away all your rubbish. And the last point is don't forget to pay your fees, whoever you pay them, and sign the intentions book so people know where you stay and more particularly where you're going just in case something happens to you. Thanks team for hanging out today, I really appreciate that. That's all the tips I've got for today. However, I'm sure that you've got many tips of your own as well when it comes to staying in huts or refuges. So please put the comments in below and let me know what your great tips are. And if you haven't subscribed, that'll be much appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you in the next action-packed, informative, funny, and enjoyable video next time. And until then, always stay safe, stay strong. See you in the next video, everyone. Bye.